Let me explain further. Okay, now this is you. You are the observer, okay? And this is what a cylinder. And you have the uh, a point here on the cylinder, okay? You want to trace out the helix on the cylinder. All right. So if you're standing here, all right, and this is the cylinder. Now, this, check this out. This circle you're seeing here represents the circular front of the cylinder. While this rectangle you're seeing here represents what? The height of this uh, cylinder. So we have the circular front here and we have the rectangular uh, body here. Okay. So you will also notice that at some point here, you're seeing broken lines and visible outlines. Okay. These broken lines represent hidden details. Okay. While the visible outlines uh, represent the part you can see. Now it is different for all of these. Okay. Now I will tell you why. Now it is not just enough for you to memorize how a right hand helix or a, a left hand helix is, but it is expedient that you un you know it and you understand how it works. Okay, now back to our demonstration. Now, this is you, you're the observer, okay, and this is a cylinder, okay? Now, do not forget, this is what clockwise movement, and this is what anti-clockwise what movement. So, let us assume that this is you, and you're standing here, and this is the start point, okay, representing this, uh, it is represented here, rather, this is the start point, okay, here. Okay, so clockwise, remember clockwise is like this, one revolution, meaning it will start from this point, go around and end here, all right? So one revolution, this is clockwise, so it goes like this, clockwise, goes like this, and it ends here. So what do you notice? What do you notice? Okay, now there is uh, the, the rope, representing the locus of point, disappears first and reappear. So you can see that here clearly, disappears and reappear. So that is a right hand helix. Now a left hand helix, when the point, the start point is at the bottom, okay? Remember this is what, it will go this way, anti-clockwise. Okay, this is clockwise, this is anti-clockwise. Now one revolution, anti-clockwise, one revolution, it will end at this point. So this is, you're still here, the observer. So it goes, this is anti-clockwise, not forget. So anti-clockwise, one revolution, stops here, starts here, stops here. All right, so what do you observe? It appears and disappears. All right. So we have this. It appears and disappears. Hidden details. Okay. Now that is when the start point is at the bottom. Now, when the start point is at the top, what happens? All right. So the same procedure, the same process, rather. Clockwise is this way. Do not forget. Okay. So clockwise, we're going like this clockwise from the beginning to the end. All right. What do you notice? Appears. And disappears appears and disappears all right then for anti-clockwise do not forget this way so we we'll move one revolution and it's going this way now from the beginning to the end what happens it disappears and it reappears disappears and reappears i want to believe that is self-explanatory uh enough all right Okay, so how do you draw a helix? Remember, you could be instructed to draw a right-hand helix or a left-hand helix, okay? Whichever kind of helix you're drawing doesn't really matter. Just follow the same process. So I'm going to explain. So you start, you'll be given the word, the diameter of the helix and the height. Don't forget, this is the height. The height of the cylinder. So how do you start? You start by drawing a circle. All right, let me leave this up. Okay, you start by drawing a circle. So you draw the circle, all right? You draw the diameter of the circle, then you extend it out. So after doing so, um, you drop a perpendicular at this point on the circle to divide the circle into four equal parts. So after drawing the circle, you use your set square like this. Okay. You drop a perpendicular, so you extend. So we have that. So what do you do next? You extend this line, like I said before, you extend this line. Then you transfer this line, this middle line. Okay, down here, you draw a thin line, you transfer it up, draw a thin line, all right? So you locate any point where you want to start the length of the cylinder, okay? Or rather the height of the cylinder. Now, if, for example, the diameter is given to be 50, you stretch 2.5, um, that's 25, 2.5 centimeter, 25 millimeter on your pair of compass, you draw the circle, then do not forget the diameter is the same so the height 
the 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 width or the breadth of the cylinder will be equivalent to the what the diameter of the circle. So if this is fifty, this is also going to be fifty. So look for any convenient point uh, of your choice. Okay, any distance of your choice. Drop it perpendicular there. Okay, then from here you measure. For example, if the height is eighty, you measure eighty. Then you complete the what the rectangle. So you have the circular front here, and you have the what the rectangular body here, or, or uh, rather the the, the circular, this uh, cylindrical body. Okay, but it will appear definitely as what as a rectangle. Then you now proceed. What do you do next? You divide this circle here into what twelve equal parts. All right. How do you do that? Very simple. Now take for example, if you drill the circle with the required radius or diameter, as the case may be. All right. After drawing the circle, I told you before now that you would have to drop this perpendicular. Now with this same radius, you place here. You cut the circle at this point. You cut at this point with the same radius of the of the circle. Place your cut the point. Cut this point. You cut this point here. Cut this point here. You cut this point and this point. So you have this. So here we have this point. This point. This point. This point. And so on. So we have that. Then next, since you divided this circle into twelve equal parts, you also divide the cylinder. That's the height of the cylinder into twelve equal parts. So you drop. You draw a line at any angle of your choice here. Take any radius of your choice, all right? Then step off 12 equal parts, okay? You know, the rest of it is very, very simple. I believe you already know. So you connect the last, um, the, 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 end, the end of the cylinder to the world, the last division, and you transfer lines, and you have all of this. So going from there now, we'll move over. Now, at this point, you now drop perpendiculars, okay? You drop perpendicular at this point, one, two. Now, the reason why we are labeling this one zero, one, two, three is because the circle here is zero. Okay, for example, now let's assume it is moving clockwise, all right? So if it is clockwise, it, it will move this way. So it has to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we also do the same thing here. Zero, one, two, three, four to twelve, okay? I believe that's clear. All right, then next... You drop perpendiculars at this point. You drop perpendiculars at this point. All right. So we have this. This perpendicular. Then next, you now connect this point. For example, now uh, one and eleven are corresponding. So you draw lines through one and eleven. Okay. And you extend it into the rectangle. Two and ten, they are corresponding. You draw, you extend it to the rectangle, and so on and so forth. Four and eight. Okay. Now, be very, very sure that while drawing these lines, it should be parallel to the side of what the rectangle. Okay. We don't want to have a situation like, for example, like this. Okay. No, we do not. So it should be parallel. Now, we have zero here. All right, we have zero here. Now, zero and 12, this is zero, this is 12, okay? So, when you want to start tracing out the locus of the point on the helix, so here we have zero and 12. So you go to zero, you ball, 12, you ball. I'll just make it a dark dot there. Now, here we have one and 11 corresponding. Let me raise this up. Now, here we have one and uh, 11 corresponding, all right? So, this is one. This is 11. We have 2 and 10 corresponding. This is 2. This is 10. We have 3 and 9. 3, 9. 4 and 8. 4, 8. All right? So if it is a right-hand helix, that is clockwise. Do not forget, clockwise. And you are starting from here. That means it will disappear first and reappear. Because you are starting from the bottom. Okay? But had it been you are starting, you were starting from the top here. All right? And it is clockwise. Remember, it will... Come this way so it will appear first and what and disappear so you now connect the points using a french curve or a flexible curve or a flexible broom connect the points all right if it is clockwise that means it is going to disappear first so you use broken lines to draw this part of the curve then at this turning point you use what visible outline now do not forget i told you in the previous video that if you want to connect curves 
connect turning points first. All right, do not attempt to connect here and stop here, then continue. No, connect this part. So you use broken lines to connect this part and use what visible outline to connect this part. Then you can uh, continue and finish up your helix.